Okay, here we go. Oh, left the bitters here. I gotta buy some more. I'm down to 250, so I'll get bitters from uh, Watkins later. It's the end of it. Hmm. Moringa. Moringa. Bitters. Moringa bits. Put a moringa tea. Very good for you. Hey, we got moringa down South Africa. Trees. But I ran out of that. We'll get some more. Meanwhile, black cherry juice. Don't we love our black cherry juice? Pure black cherry. You want that? Ah, okay. Mm. Look, I um, I finished. Let me bring this other. This my other book out. Um, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, this is next on the. AD was reading this. You know, whoops. So I'm gonna read that. Start reading that right away. But I just finished this book. In fact, okay. Now, see, let me tell you what happened. I was in South Africa walking by a Every time I see South Africa does not have a book culture. So every time they are walking, you know, if I see some books, I just, you know, even a little bit, I just check. And so this book, you can't see now because the cut, the, the, it's, I think the whole book was there, but it was falling apart because it only cost like 10 rand, 10 rand. I think the rate right now because of, well, because the saw, not the saws, but we got, whatever, whatever virus we have right now going around, uh, uh, the, the something 19 virus, because of that, you know, the, the, the South African rates are now some. It's like uh, fifteen, like one one American dollar equals like fifteen point something South African dollars. Can't wait till I get back if they let me back. Oh my goodness! Oh, they ban Europe, but you know, because of the sun or whatever have you, you know, Africa, you know. And luckily, for some reason, well, not for some reason, I will explain another thing. But I came through uh, Kenya, so I didn't even go through uh, my normal route. Anyway, uh, so so I was reading the book, read the book, and then of course it was falling apart. So this was the, um, you know, so I just had this last bit to read, so I did, and I finished it. But I want to read you something from this very interesting. Let me tell you. Let, well, let me put my glass up. I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you about my my little history of, of everything. Even uh, this whole thing with the with with this thing. Usually I take my come up to this, to the state from South Africa I take uh, I take Emirates or, or Qatar yeah which means I have to go through you know Emirates or Qatar Middle East whatever and then come over but for some well of course a number of reasons I just came came from Cape Town to um and there's a brief stop in um Zimbabwe then basically uh Kenya um and then from Kenya to New York so back the same way so that's not banned yet of course you know they say Africa. I guess the sun is not is not too friendly to this virus. So anyway, so we don't have a lot of cases. So anyway, so the point is, uh, so I was reading this. Uh, 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 so that's one incident, you know what I mean. So hopefully they won't ban me. If I can get back to to my peoples in South Africa. If I can get back, that would be good. Uh, if they let me out, let me back in. Whatever they they're, they're doing. <sighs> um, I leave April first, I believe. Okay. So anyway. So I got this book. Now, let me tell you my history of Frank, Frank Yerby. Uh, this is Frank Yerby. Oh, my Yerby wine. I can't show you the funny thing. Now, he's known as uh, the one of the best storytellers ever or whatever it is. I don't know what the blurb was. But what happened was uh, I read the first Frank, ran Frank Yerby in, um, I guess it was the early 70s. It must be early 70s, late 60s, when I read The Dahomean. Uh, right? That was, his, like, I guess, his first book or whatever it is. And then from then, and that was really about a you know kingdom of Dahomey. You know, a cat was was uh, kidnapped from there, you know, by the slavers, you know, or, you know, king, whatever he was. And then he went over to uh, America, whatever things like that. And, da, 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 da. and so it follows that story. And then, then, then what I did, I read somehow. I read uh, well, so, so that's it. Okay, let's let's leave it at that. The next time I ran into a Frank Yerby, these are things I just walk around and find books. Was right before the Iraq II war, you know, the the, the W Iraq war, and uh, I had had my incident with the C. Actually, I was in where was I? I was in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, that was when I I did have a okay. I survived the World Trade Center because I was down there working for Democracy Now at the time. We were right there. Okay, right. Then I had my incident with the C, which I had like a, a neck brace on. I had my arm was in a sling, you know, and I'm walking around Silver Spring, Maryland. At the time, you had a DC sniper. So I go from the, 
<laughs> World Trade Center to the DC sniper in about a, a year or whatever, two years. <laughs> I'm going like, so I'm walking around like that, but I had picked up uh, Frank Yerby's uh, thing, it's called a Saracen Blade. Okay, and really it was like a, um, it was about basically that region, um, the, the Saracen or the, 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 what do you call those? Those, those people, the Farsi, you know, that, that area, you know, you know those, 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 those folks, you know, but they're the ones that invented assassination, right? So when I was talking to some brother, and I told him in the street, I said, I don't know if we should, uh, how do you say, evade Iraq, because, you know, that's where the assassins were. <laughs> I mean, we had this big, big conversation. So, so that was interesting. Now, remember, we're doing our ADOS thing, and I come across this book. Um, this is called uh, Captain Rebel. Okay, now let me try to explain one more, go back to Frank Yerby. After, after he did Dahomey, which is basically, you know, African, you know, black, whatever it is, um, then he really, he's a black guy now, but he started writing, some people call it plantation novels. I don't know. Um, uh, because it, it all took place in the South, you know, in, in that time period. This one is particularly about, I think it's Nick the Fox and Haro, I think is the big one that he did. I forget what, is it here? Uh, Civil War, da 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 da. Oh, yeah, author of The Foxes of Haro. I read that too, some long time ago. Okay, Frank Rivera, who was uh, been called the world's most popular storyteller, was born in Augusta, Georgia, Georgia in 1916. Mm. He gained his MA at the University of blah, 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 writing, and writing. Uh, but if you notice back then, they didn't put his picture on any of the books because he's a black guy. You know, this is like, uh, this book is like 1959, something like that. This is the 60s. I mean, the 59s. The 50s. So, um, I have to give you this whole detail. Just bear with me. Ch chill. Uh, so, um, so he was very popular and he sold da 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 Okay, now this is about this right before the Civil War and during the Civil War. This story. Now his writing, what he does, think of a black man that's writing from the perspective of a white guy. You know, but he's sort of sympathetic to black people. I can't explain it, but, you know, it's re it works. But, you know, so his, mo 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 most of the stuff, is, let me put my glasses back on so I can look. Right. So most of his stuff is really about, uh, uh, you know, just slavery, uh, or that period, the, the, the southern, the southern kind of sensibilities, right? So, uh, so, so, but, but it's interesting because, like, um, when he writes, a lot of stuff is that basically is his historical fiction, okay, with a bunch of humanitarian sensibilities in it. I chalk it up to I think the greatest writing period, at least for for me, the greatest writing period for me was. Everybody talks about the Harlem Renaissance, but they talk about, I don't know, whatever, this Renaissance, that Renaissance, whatever it is, or even the 60s, you know, Black Arts Movement. And those two fine, fine movements, hey, great, da da da. But to me, the greatest period of writing was basically from about 1953 to about 1963, you know, which Frank Yerby's right in there. There's a bunch of writers that came with it. And I don't know, I think it was because it was right after the Harlem Renaissance, you know, because things that, you know, the publishers wouldn't publish something, you know, um, this is when, um, even some at near the end of this period is when uh, James Baldwin came about. You know, um, to me, one of the greatest books uh, is um, is Richard Wright's uh, uh, The Outsider. All that was written in a certain period. There was a lot of great, great Chester Hahn. Bunch of people were writing about that time. Okay, but I think somehow they were still close to with each other, right? But they was talking race. They were talking stuff that um, the, you know, even women's issues. Women, but anyway, I think it was the greatest period of writing for me. Okay. Okay, having said all that, I want to read you something um, near the end of this this book here. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to tell you the whole book. It's, it's really a good book. I don't think you can get it, you know, and I, and I can't get another, and, well, I can't get another copy. Anyway, and he's, he, he's this, uh, he, he was a, a, a blockade, um, he broke the blockades. You know, he's a southerner, broke the blockades for the northern people, got very rich, whatever it is. Um, but um, after the war, then this is a, 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 a thing. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. This is what happened. He goes, then because he's such a, a big, uh, uh, a good, um, uh, whatever he is, you know, these folks, the, the, the white people, you know, after, the, after they lose in the war, they wanted him to basically, uh, you know, lead. They were, they were having, they, were, they had this meeting, right? He's meeting. And they unanimously, unanimously, you know, um, ask him basically to be the cat to lead the, you know, to lead this resistance against the, the northerners and, and whatever it is, right? Okay. Um, so he went through, all, he, he says all that stuff. 
um, uh, let me just read you this little this little tiny thing he says here because it's very interesting. Let me get closer. Sorry. I don't know why I'm getting closer. Um, he says because um, they nominate him to unanimously everybody's cheering him, whatever have you, and. Uh, but he's not with it. He wasn't with it before he went. So he says, and I want to ask, and, and I want to ask you as men and brothers not to do this thing. I beg you not to disgrace the dead who lost their battle like men uh, in the open, facing the foe. Do you believe this cowardice, this knavery is any substitute for the courage of men like our own George Drake who flashed, uh, who flashed like swords and stood tall and in thunder. What happened to you? I call upon you to stand up tall in the honor of that uh, of that was that was yours. You can't turn back the clock. Uh, you can't uh, go. You can't go back. You cannot push the Southland down into a barbarity. It's uh, it's like your children, and, and their children's children. A hundred years. To, it'll, it'll take well. It'll take your, your children and your children should a hundred years to recover from. He paused, looking at them. Going to lay, lay going lay, uh, later on the line, boys. He said, "I'm against this thing. Against uh, you if you're if you're mule stubborn enough to persist in it. I'll fight you every way I can, with the press, the law, the pulpit, and the most God high. Uh, every way except violence. Okay, let me just." I'll leave it at that. So this is he's telling me he's not with them, right? So he leaves, you know, and they let him go. And he got up and uh, he got up. Uh, got, he, he got down from the rostrum and walked away quietly from the hall, and not a hand was raised to stop him. Okay, now whew, he had found out. That, that I can't really. Well, I have to. Um, um, this early in the story, he did something that was unspeakable. Blah blah blah. And he crippled this black guy. He was drunk at the time. He didn't know what was happening. Blah 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 blah. blah. So he's he's very bad. just talking to boy. He's very remorseful for a bunch of stuff that's happened. This boy went through a whole lot of stuff. So he goes to this guy. He says to him, uh, "Now let me go back to this thing that I just said." So what has happened is these folks. They they want to. Uh, he's basically warned them. If you do this thing, this thing is gonna be it's gonna uh, be a lasting effect on generations to come. Your children, your children's children. That's what he's talking about. Now he goes to this thing. Um, he says this this black this black guy that he get crippled, you know, and, and uh, he goes to him. He says, uh, uh, "Look, Fred, uh, Tyler. His name is Tyler. Uh, there must be something I can I can, can do because this because he wanted to do something for this cripple." And he says, "No, no." The guy, the guy says. Uh, here he says, it's too late, Marsh Ty. Uh, them army doctors that looked at me said trying to straighten me out would kill me sure. Sides, the Negro smile was peaceful. Uh, this Negro smile was peaceful. It ain't so bad. I don't feel no pain at all. Because he's like totally paralyzed from the neck down. Oh, no, he's totally paralyzed. From, like, he can't, you know, I guess he moves his arm or whatever it is. Um, um, uh, just just from his legs down, but he's he, he, they built a special thing for him to to um, to go in his and sell cakes and stuff like that, so he make a living for himself. So don't worry, don't, don't worry your head about me. So I'll be all right. Looking at him, seeing how cheerful he was, Tyler felt sick. Lord God, he prayed. Uh, he prayed. Have you forgotten me? This uh, if you have you forgiven me this too? He's been forgiven a lot of stuff anyway. Uh, tell me, Fred. He said. But uh, why didn't I know you uh, that night you came to me? Um, uh, because, because I was new. Your pa um, then brought me uh, just a couple of days before off of Moss Henry's uh, Sutton, who was breaking up his place to go to war. Didn't have no missus nor children, Moss Henry. So he sold his folks off, um, freed some of them uh, that had trades and, and knowed how to read and write. And after that, I got hurt. So uh, some free colored folks took me in. Couldn't, uh, couldn't. No, he says I got hurt. He didn't say like you, you, you crippled me, right? Uh, forgiving, a uh, forgiving uh, uh, person. Um, couldn't come back to your house because uh, I was a uh, real bad off. Then Cato, that's Cato's his, his longtime servant, the uh, the, the black guy, Moss Moss Ty, uh, uh, come and told me that you uh, that you and Father Joe hadn't even missed me. And seeing as how I wouldn't be no good to, to you all anyhow, I decided to lay low. Look, Fred Tyler said, uh, uh, there must be something I can do. 
I'll have you, uh, um, I have you, have you, uh, 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 I'll have you a decent cottage built for one thing, and see that you never want for anything as long as you live. Thank you, sir," uh, said the, ne the Negro. "said But I'm, I'm mighty, uh, I'm mighty comfortable here. Wouldn't like to move away from my friends, and I do, and I do right well with old best candies. Don't be a fool, Fred," Tyler said sharply. "I want to do something for you." Fred's forehead wrinkled in thought. "Don't reckon there's much you can do, uh, Mars Ty." He said, but I do uh, mildly uh, uh, appreciate your offer. Uh, tell you what, sir, if he really wants to do something uh, that I will, uh, will gladden my spirits, right, part, you can put the money you was going to spend on me in that fund them Yankees, white folks, um, then started to build a school for the colored children. Uh, 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 where are the offices, Fred? Uh, Tyler said. Down the canal, sir. Uh, Kate to show you. You really uh, going to do that, Master Ty? Ah, oh, you mighty, uh, I'll be mighty grateful. Ain't nothing my folks need more than trades and book learning. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit at the end. So he ends up, uh, build, you know, trying to, what he ends up doing is building, uh, uh, starting groundwork for uh, uh, two separate things. One for um, the orphans, uh, well, the orphans, the, the of uh, of Confederate you know, soldiers and stuff like that, and then a, a school for them, and then an orphanage and a school for for colored folks. You know, uh, the ones sometimes the, the people were free; they would just run off and leave their children with with, with, with other people, and thinking they was coming back and all the rest of that stuff. So it ends up the white folks come. The white folks he was at a meeting with he was he was their hero during the war and all the rest of the stuff ends up. They come and they basically destroy the, co the colored building he was building and the orphanage, whatever have you. And they whip his behind. I mean, to, to, to an inch of his life and just leave him there, right? So here's, here's what I'm getting at. Well, here's, here's the problem that we have today. ADOS or, or reparations. This is what it's about. Even when somebody, even when they want to give you reparations, there's this faction that's, that's going to really go against it and do everything they, they, they can. And because the United States government, you know, didn't, do anything these these mobs could form and do and, and destroy anything even if a good white person wanted to do something for them you see not happening so there's our case for well that's still our case but you see so this reparations thing is really interesting because now we at a point where you're going to have forces that you can't even see because they can't open open and be, be good white people i guess i don't know um uh, and they they just ain't gonna have it because they they just ain't gonna have it so we got to you know all we got is right, might, or we gotta have some might on our side. So anyway, that's what I got from um, that's what I got from this book, um, uh, Captain Rebel, from uh, one of my favorite writers, um, Frank Yerby. and it was a great read. And like I said, but by then they did, did a lot of the stuff. They would couch it. It's like um, let me start. Let me go off a little bit. I used to go on these reading tears. I read an author that read all their works, right? When I read Iron Rand. You know, The Fountainhead, uh, um, Atlas Shrugged. But I read all her books, the, 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 all of the treatises. But what really, at the time, I was doing plays. So, But she had this really great play. And the, the premise of the play uh, is they have a trial. And the trial, what they do is they take people to the Broadway play. They took people from an audience and put them in a the jury. So the play would change every night according to what the jury said. Okay? But when I read Anne Rand, I said, what are these, what are these right-wing people talking about? What? She's just a hack writer. I mean, not saying she's a hack writer, but it's like it's just like a, a what's called a gothic novel. You know, it's a romance. Like this is a romance novel steeped in one some some history, whatever have you, some some fiction, whatever it is. But it's in essence the, the principles she, she's putting in there. I don't know where she got them from, but it didn't affect me that way. I'm reading it as like a love story. You know what I mean? It's like and let me explain in modern terms because you all are in, uh, most people people don't know what I'm talking about. You know the film Titanic, you know, Joe, uh, Cameron, right? There was another film made Titanic, the, Titanic, I think it was made in the 40s, 30s, whenever it was made, 50s, I don't know when it was, 50s, I don't know when it was made. But if you look at that film and you look at Joe, uh, Cameron's Titanic, it's the exact same film. The only difference is that James Cameron's Titanic was wrapped in a love story and this whole mission, this whole, you know, finding, finding the thing. But otherwise, it's the exact, it's the exact same film. It's just wrapped in something else. So, so that's what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm sorry I went off on that. So I'm finished with that. I'm going to take a little breathe. I might start this tonight. I don't see. Because I got like a week and a half. 
two weeks. I don't know. Whenever to read uh, the color money, this is what uh, ADOS is reading. Yeah, uh, looks pretty easy. Let's see what happens. So I'll read it. I'll read it as I as I feel like. I'm I'm sequestered uh, right now at you know um, where I usually stay, but I'm house sitting over across town there. Nobody's there, so all I and they got this big TV and stuff like that. We got TV here, but I tried. To, let me say something. I'm sorry, I'm taking some long. I gotta, I gotta get a lot of stuff on my brain. Right now. I tried watching. Somebody asked. Somebody said that there's a series going on about hunters. You know, with the Al Pacino. Something. I started to to watch that. I couldn't take it. I just I just stopped. I couldn't couldn't do it. Then there was another series called uh, the Magicians. The Magicians. I tried. I tried watching that. You know, black people in it. I'm going like, you know. So I, it looks it's a good premise, but I just stopped. It. So I'm not watching no TV. Somebody said that there was something. Um, Martin Luther King. They did some sort of speech they had. Or something happened. On oh, Nat Geo or something like that, so I might try to look at that. But everything, even the, there's a new series Spencer. I'm talking about Ted. I read all of the Spencer novels. You know the the, the uh, uh, Robert Parker, Robert B. Parker, all his novel, all the Spencer novels. Even before they, they made it into a series, even before yeah, the, the series spinoff Hawk was. Uh, and I really like Spencer, but the premise that they have here, I, I, I tried to watch the first one. Maybe I'm not not in Wahlberg. I don't know. I'm just not into it. It's just yeah. <sighs> Anyway, I done waxed on for longer than I should. Uh, I being me too. Ooh, I got some way. I'll do another thing. Uh, from me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet. Give me, ooh, here, at a, what's this? You see my cat? The ADOS reality. Letting you know what I only suspect.